Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today we are doing Grease Pencil Part 2, which indeed is two times better than Part 1, so get ready for the tutorial of your lives with the Grease Pencil Messiah. And uh, last tutorial, if I remember correctly, we talked about basic navigation, you know, zooming in and out, you know, panning and all this, and then we also talked about the fact that you can draw, and then, you know, go down a frame, that's right arrow again, or you could just, you know, toggle over here to frame 2. And then we can draw again. Notice the onion skinning from the previous frame. And we just made a very simple, I don't even know if we made an animation. I just said that it was possible. But we kind of know the fundamentals of, yes, we can make an animation. So now the question is, how do we make it not look like a garbage in particular? Let me just delete these uh, keyframes. In particular, how do we like make a circle, for example, something super fundamental? And remember, uh, at least for these beginning tutorials, I'm going to be using a mouse uh, just because that's what most people will likely be using. And because of that, uh, look at this circle. It doesn't really connect correctly. Um, one thing you'll notice is the line is super jagged. That's another issue. And then there's some aesthetic things we might want to change. Like, for example, it has uniform thickness. Like, you know, the line does it get, doesn't uh, get thinner and thicker or anything, and it's gray. So in this tutorial, if I haven't hinted enough already, we're going to be talking about strokes, uh, which is what we're doing right now, kind of like a pencil strokes or brush strokes. And hopefully I can make this one a bit shorter than the last one, because I lied to you. I said it would be a short one, but... I guess the best way to do that is to begin. So uh, normally when you draw with the draw tool, it will look like this by default. Again, I'm just uh, using the default 2D animation scene. So this is a new scene. This is what it's always going to look like. Well, first of all, why is it gray? You'd think that by default it would be black, and it is. But it's actually affected by the strength, which you can think of as a opacity kind of or transparency. So if we bring up the strength, again, this is our brush strength, uh, to 1. It's going to be maximum strength, which means it's just going to be pure black. If we bring it near zero, it's going to be very close to white. So very faint, very transparent. And then in between is in between. So, of course, we don't want to be drawing and then be, being like, okay, now I want a darker stroke. And then I want an even darker one. You don't want to do that. So the hotkey for this, and this is an important one, so remember this one, is um, Shift F. So Shift F. And you're going to get this menu, and you can just drag in and out, where 1 is maximum darkness, you know, as we discussed, and 0 is kind of fully transparent. So Shift-F, pick 1, there you go, Shift-F, 50, ar around 0.46, there you go. Now the next thing is the thickness, so not just the darkness, the, what am I just saying, the darkness, but the thickness, in other words, the radius. So same kind of deal, you can bring this up here, and now it's going to be much thicker, as you can see. But again, it's going to be gray because that's depending on the strength. We can make that even bigger. And the short key for that one is F. So F for radius. We can make that small. F, make that big. Shift F for strength. So really, you're just using F uh, in combination with some other stuff. And by the way, a little sneak peek, uh, you can pick something like the eraser, which uses very similar principles. So F for the size of the eraser, right? And then Shift F. For the strength of the eraser so something near zero like 0.01 it's going to be very faint and we have to go back and forth a bunch just to get rid of it and it's going to take longer to get rid of these dark strokes uh, uh, as compared to these right but if we shift f maximum strength on the eraser we can erase very very easily so this kind of thing applies to all the tools okay so now we know how to draw uh, in terms of strength and in terms of uh, radius as well but this doesn't really solve our question of making a good-looking circle. Sure, it's thick. Uh, sure, it's, like, darker and everything, but it doesn't look good. And unless you want to get a, um, you know, a tablet, um, you, you know, it's kind of hard to do this by hand unless you really want to move your mouse very smoothly. So the next thing you want to know about is the stroke menu, which has more controls than just strength and radius. So let's open it up. So the first thing you might see is this post-processing, which means you make a stroke. And then when you let go, it's going to do some kind of post-processing on that. So, for example, we can increase the smoothing, which means I can draw. Right now it's very jagged because I'm doing it live. But the moment I let go, you can see it smoothed it, uh, smoothed it out a lot. So let me do that again. And you can see that this is already helping out quite a bit. So let's open that up again. And we can do multiple iterations of smoothing. So it's going to do a bunch of passes, kind of like uh, you feed the stroke into the smoothing program, and then you take it and feed it back and over and over and over, uh, depending on this number of iterations. So something like three, 
is going to give us something very smooth, at least uh, as compared to what I input. Okay, and this already helps us make a circle somewhat, so I make this really bad circle, and it cleans it up quite a bit to something, you know, something much better, but we can do even better. So the next thing I want to talk about is stabilize stroke. So I'm just going to disable post-processing uh, here. So stabilize stroke is going to uh, give us something that isn't just, you know, we draw and it shows up, but there's going to be a bit of a lag. So I'm going to enable this, and you see I click and drag, but now there's nothing really. There's this kind of red line. And you can see there, it takes a bit until it draws, but this kind of averages out our mouse movements before putting stuff down. And this is kind of the main one, other than a post-processing, that helps us make really, really nice, uh, smooth strokes. So already that's looking pretty good as compared to, you know, what I could have done otherwise. So this is called stabilization, very useful. And, of course, this also works on a tablet. And we can increase the radius, so how, how much of a delay there is until it starts drawing. So now if we have a bigger delay, you see we can go much further, and then it's going to start drawing. So this, is, this kind of is a calligraphy style thing, if you want to make super, super stylized, uh, smooth stuff. Okay, so that's a stabilization. And then there's also the other end, you know, not post-processing smoothing and a stabilization-based smoothing, but we can randomize. We can randomize. And right now it's not going to do anything. We're just drawing. But, but we can uh, randomize a bunch of stuff. So, for example, we can randomize the pressure, which you can kind of think of as radius. So let me draw now. So now it kind of looks like ink. So now it really kind of looks like you're making calligraphy. So instead of having a constant radius, you see it's kind of flickering or jittering, whatever you want to call it. And this is something you can do to make very stylized art. So I, I can make my average radius bigger, and it's still going to do that nice flickering. Kind of gives it a real hand-painted uh, kind of look, like it's uh, ink bleeding into the paper and all that. So that's pressure, and then you can randomize strength, which, uh, can you guess uh, what it's going to do? It's going to make it a darker and lighter. So now it kind of looks like watercolor or something like that. I'm no artist, but I'm just assuming that's the right thing. It kind of looks like watercolor. And all these things, um, all these settings let you make different kinds of brushes, obviously. So here we have a watercolor brush, and that's how some of these pre-made ones are made, by the way, that we talked about, I think. So, you know, we have our pencil which has a bunch of settings for our stroke, so this one doesn't have any randomization, whereas something like this, which you can tell does, right? you can see it's getting thinner and thicker as we do it, well, that, for some reason, doesn't have randomization, but that's how we make the custom brush. So, you know, instead of uh, using these brushes, uh, we can make our own using these settings. I wonder if these are hard-coded and not sure, honestly. Okay, cool. And then one more thing I want to talk about is... Um, on the smoothing end, we have post-processing. Again, that smooths it out after the fact. We have stabilization, which kind of adds a delay. But we also have something much simpler, which is active smoothing. So right now, let me just go back to a normal, like a pencil or something. Make that bigger and also darker. So F and Shift F. So this is what our standard stroke looks like. In this case, it's pretty blurred, but that's just because I picked pencil soft. Doesn't really matter. You can see it's pretty jagged again because we don't have uh, much smoothing going on. But uh, there's something called uh, real-time smoothing, which is this active smooth. Bring this up, and then it's not going to do any kind of that uh, lag thing from before. But it's just going to make it a bit smoother. So here are some very smooth lines. And then without any active smooth, it gets, you know, a bit jittery. And I am trying my best to make straight lines. I'm not trying to, you know, emphasize the point or anything. Okay, so... All this is, you know, it's very basic stuff, and it's very, you know, you know, how do you even, like, put down lines, but it is important to do before I even teach you, you know, any animations, which is why I'm going into it now. So, uh, using the things we learned, I'm just going to use a, I don't know, I'm going to use a pencil, and then we're going to customize it a bit, so. I guess uh, it already saved our settings from before, if you remember. I'm going to turn off this randomization, which I guess we have to mute like that for it to work. Grease pencil is still in its early stages, don't worry about it. Um, so now it has uniform radius and strength. And I'm going to do some uh, smoothing stuff. So I'm going to have post-processing and stabilize, which is going to give us... That's way too much uh, stabilize. It was at like 40 or something before. Which is going to give us this kind of stabilization. 
and then smoothing afterwards to get nice circles. And then we can do the same kind of thing we were doing before. So we make a circle fairly quickly, go down a frame. We can make one that looks pretty similar. And again, this isn't going to be a good animation, but it's not going to look as jagged as before because it's kind of conserving its area because it's easier to make, uh, make it conserve its area in this case because I can make them pretty similar to each other. Again, not perfect or I'd say not even good. But now we have a basic uh, seven frame animation. And if we play this, you know, it does its thing. Kind of looks like a teardrop going from left to right. But um, there you go. Now you know the very basics of controlling your stroke, which again, a lot of this applies to any of these tools, really. Like eraser, we talked about, you know, size, strength. So this is going to be very soft. But um, one of the m more important things is just knowing how these uh, things work in general and also knowing that we can make custom brushes. You don't have to choose between these. Uh, really, all this is doing is uh, changing these settings over here. And by the way, they need to get on that uh, randomized checkbox, not actually doing anything if you have non-zero numbers here. Anyways, um, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, the best way to support me is over at Patreon. But um, that is just if you are so inclined to donate and you have the means to do so, you get private access to some stuff. Doesn't matter. So hopefully you enjoyed this free tutorial and I hope you join me on the next one where we do more, you know, basics of grease pencil and hopefully everything has been super understandable so far.